this is Brian Oldtrogi from Grunblau Design Studio and I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do a software tutorial for Rhino version 5. Many times when you're just starting out modeling it's better to watch a more complicated model and try things that are a little bit more complicated than the simple tutorials that are available elsewhere. Um, so in this tutorial we'll be building an automotive rim. So let's get started. So this is uh, Rhino version 5. You can see that I already have a bunch of curves in space. This tutorial assumes that you're able to set up curves and all that. Primarily I'm just going to be uh, surfacing the, the rim based on just these curves. So you can see here that there's uh, a basic profile of what the outside of the rim would be. This is some curves representing what I want my spoke to be. This is some mounting holes for the hub and uh, here's some information to start to develop the geometry of the rim. Uh, so right now we don't need the uh, rim profile, we don't need the hub geometry. And so we'll start by revolving these two curves into disks that we'll then begin to start editing. So we'll use the revolve tool which is under surface and we want to go in the same axis as the rim. Um, it's also represented by this uh, line here, so I'll just use this line. Start angle 0, hit enter. Revolution angle 360, hit enter. So always keep an eye up here just to see what it's asking you. Um, so here's the two disks in space and we'll project this geometry onto these disks so that we can start to edit. Uh, one way to clean up your model just since we're going to be projecting even more lines onto the surface, I'd like to get rid of these uh, ISO curves. So I'm just going to select that, go to Properties, and turn Show ISO Curve to Off. Now you can see that that cleaned that up so that any other information that we put onto the surface we'll be able to see more easily. So we we'll use our Project to Surface tool, which is right here. Select Curves and Points to Project. Uh, we want this curve to be on the outside. I'm going to hit enter and we want it to be on the outside disks. So I'm going to hit enter again. And while that's selected I'm just going to trim that. So click on trim, make that whole. The next two we want to go on the back disk. So I'm going to do project these two, enter and select the back disk. And while those are selected I'm also just going to hit trim and trim those out as well. So now we're done with this geometry for now. So I can go ahead and turn that off so we can better see in there. Um, we're going to be making a, a surface that goes from this inner shape to this outer shape. And to do that uh, successfully we're probably going to add uh, some more information in here because we're going to use the network command. So just going to lay in some simple lines to sort of control the surface as it goes around the corners. So one there, one there, maybe one out here on the flat, and one in this corner here. Okay, so now we'll use the network, which is also under surface. There's that one. So I'm going to go from that curve to that curve with these lines as well. And be sure that position is selected here. Uh, we're going to be adding fillets and stuff to this so that we can just allow that edge to remain hard and get a preview of what that's going to look like. Click on preview. That looks OK, so I'm going to hit OK. And once again, I'm going to make those invisible. So there's our surface. Now you can tell that this is impossibly thin right here. So we're going to thicken that by moving this back dish back half an inch. So I'm going to go to the top view, select move, and move that back half of an inch. And since we just moved that, we can go ahead and just do a simple extrude between these two in order to fill that gap we just opened up. So I'm going to do extrude this curve and when you get this it means that you're in 
the wrong seat plane but you can get out of that by just clicking on direction and defining that so holding down ortho just define that and we don't want to go both sides so I'm just going to type in 0.5 and there that filled that hole okay so now we're going to punch this all the way through there and trim uh, trim out this hole in this surface so I'm just going to select extrude and again we're going the wrong direction so I'm going to click there because I want it to go that direction and this time I am going to do both sides just because we don't care how long that is select trim I'm going to use this object and this object to trim because I want to take that end off as well as this opening I also want to cut this off the back so I'm going to trim that okay so that's the start of the opening and so Right now, I'm going to join all of these poly surfaces or these surfaces together into one poly surface. That way, Rhino will know that there's a relationship between these two uh, edges or all of these edges, and that will allow us to do a solid fillet. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do some housekeeping on where the surface ends are. So you can see, uh, I'm going to make this more clear you can see that the surface end is right there and the surface end is right there so we want to move that to touch here just to make our fillets not have to work so hard to go around those corners so I'm going to go to surface edit tools adjust close surface seam and select the seam and just snap it to that so now that's a continuous line through all of that geometry okay now we can join it all together Okay, and all these curves that exist in here, I'm going to go ahead and delete. So now we're just looking at surface. Okay, so this inner curve right here, I want to fill it a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go to solid, fill it edge, fill it edge, type in 0.25, enter. Ask me to select the edges, and I want it to be that edge. So I'm going to accept that. Now lay in that fillet and all the rest of these except for this outer one I want to be an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to resume the command by hitting spacebar or right clicking and I'm going to hit 0.125 enter. Edges to fillet would be this edge, this edge, this edge. Okay. Now for this outer fillet, I want to do something a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to do a variable radius fillet. So under, oops, under your Boolean tools, you have variable radius fillet. Select edge would be this one, and I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to add another handle. I'm going to add that handle right here hit enter and now we want to change this fillet up here to be a quarter of an inch so I'm just gonna click on that little handle and you could do it graphically but I want to just type it in so I'm gonna type in 0.25 enter and then hit enter to accept that okay so now I'm gonna turn on uh, render view just to see what this is starting to look like and that's the beginnings of our the apertures through our rim and remember, since uh, we're able to array this, which we're going to do now, um, we only really had to finish this one and do all that work only once. So I'm going to switch back to Ghosted so we can uh, see a little bit better. And instead of exploding this whole thing, I'm just going to extract these two disks out of this geometry before I array it. So I'm going to, if you hover over this, remember that there's extra tools so you can see that it says extract surfaces for the right click so I'm going to right click on that select surfaces to extract are those and now this is still all joined but these two are separate and I'm going to polar array that which is this one center of polar array and we need to make sure that we're in the front view plane or C plane so I'm going to do change it to the front and the center is the center of the disk and then number of items is 11 enter 
and full 360 so hit enter and you can see that uh, that populated this with all of those curves but now we just have to trim all of that out so I'm going to do edit select objects last created objects and that will select all of those so I don't have to go through that and hit trim okay select object to trim just need to take out all of these little windows So it looks like it doesn't want to do the uh, backside for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to show you the nuclear option for trim. So what that is, is you'll start your trim command. Type in CRV, enter, and then just select the subcurve. hit enter and now we should be able to go ahead and trim those out sometimes when you get uh, extreme tangent conditions it doesn't really know where one surface ends and one surface begins but there it is and it's starting to look pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and join all of these together so just hit join Okay, now that should be one full object and we're ready to run the rim around the outside. So we're going to need our rim profile, which is right here. And now, uh, a lot of times when I'm working, I'll n not have these all joined. The these are separate curves, but they're grouped so that I can select them all at one time. Uh, many times when you do a revolve, if, if you have it joined, it will forget that there was an endpoint there. And uh, for rendering, in particular, it's better if there if that endpoint goes around for the the eventual meshing that we'll uh, need to do for the rendering. Just a side note. So we're going to revolve that one. Go to the revolve tool. Start a revolve axis. Uh, I'm going to just type in zero enter and snap to that. We want to go start angle zero and full 360. So right now you'll see that these are separate surfaces and I want to go ahead and now join them all into a poly surface so I'm going to go edit select objects last created objects and hit join okay now that's one object and this is one object and we want to combine this space uh, into one entire uh, watertight object so I'm going to turn on my ghosted view for that I'm going to turn off the rim profile and I'm going to turn off the spoke profile so we can see that line in there. I'm going to hit trim. Cutting objects is this. And just opened up that space into there. So now we can join everything together. Okay. And under properties I'm going to turn off those ISO curves again. And uh, we're going to do a fillet on both sides of, of this as well. So solid, fillet edge, fillet edge, uh, 0.125 is fine for both of those. Okay. And now we're going to have to start adding the hub geometry inside this rim. So there's the outside and we need to turn back on our hub, geom our hub geometry. So there that is. And I'm going to use the chain select tool so I can select all these at once. And extrude that uh, negative two so that it goes into the rim 
or into the mass a little bit so that we can then boolean those together so we're going to use boolean union so click on boolean union want to boolean union that to that Hit enter okay and we're going to uh, sort of make an object that we're going to boolean difference out the spaces for the for the lugs so let's go ahead and extrude these oops not that and we'll do those like negative 12 and they stick out the back there and we'll do these ones Uh, let's do both sides and let's do them six. Okay, so now we can union these things together to use them as sort of tools for making those pockets that we want. So I'm going to boolean union those. Together, Hit enter. And now we can move those out I'm going to change the top view, or the top C plane. So I can move those, say, an inch back that way. And we'll Boolean difference those. So Boolean difference. Surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from would be the rim. Hit enter. Subtract width is this. Hit enter. Okay. Now we have the little seats for the lug nuts in there. And while we're here, let's do these little details. Holding down shift and extrude those through the rim. And Boolean difference from that. Subtract that. Delete. And now we have this little uh, geometry that will be a place to put a logo on the outside. So I'm going to set points, use set points to move this out here. Uh, first, I'm going to extrude this all the way through because that hole goes all the way through the rim. Again, just an arbitrary amount. Boolean difference, that. that. I'm going to move this out to the front of the rim. So I'm going to use set points. So I'm going to set that. And this is a very useful tool. Um, just pay attention to your uh, coordinate system here. So we want it to move in the Y direction. So I'm going to turn only on just set Y. A uh, quick thing for that is to right click on it and it'll turn both of those off at the same time. So we want to move that out to there and I'm going to go back to ghosted view so that we can see what we're doing. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude this both sides uh, 1 16th Oops. Make sure both sides is on. 1 16th. Okay, I'm going to boolean difference that. So from that, I'm going to subtract this new disk that we made. Okay, so now we have a little seat for a logo. Um, and I'm going to extrude just this surface right here. So instead of selecting extrude closed planar curve, I'm going to select extrude surface, the one right next door. So select that surface and type in negative 0.08. So that sticks out just a tiny bit. And we're going to uh, do a, an embossed logo here. So let's turn on, make sure just our quad snap is on. 
and go from that quad to that quad. And we want it to stick out maybe an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go from the midpoint, 0.125, hold down shift, and we're going to do a three-point arc across there. So under here is a three-point arc. So from there to there, up to the end point there. But since we're going to do a revolve, we only need half of that arc. So I'm going to go ahead and select trim using that. And then we'll just revolve this around in the circle. So same revolve tool. And that is the axis. So I'm going to hit enter, enter. There's our domed surface for the logo. And we're going to uh, make these a little bit more soft. We want to put a, a 30 second inch radius on this. So I'm going to go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. Uh, type in 1 30 second. I'm going to go around and do these ones. Then I also want to do these little guys here. And we're going to also add one to there and one to the seat. And back here, uh, in order to get the rim on and off a little bit easier, we're going to do a chamfer. So under the same toolbar, we're going to go fillet edge, chamfer edge. And let's do 0.25. We'll just do that edge. Okay, and then we'll do a chamfer around each one of where the lugs would go. But we'll do that 0.125. Okay. And then around here we'll fill it this as well. So uh, I'm going to do a uh, solid fillet edge, fillet edge, and we'll do that 0.125. And I'm going to make sure chain edges is selected just so it runs all the way around there. Hit enter. There's our fillet. So select curves and hide, and there's our finished rim. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how I made the tire for this model.